Hello, Blake Root is here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And today I'm here to talk to you about a feature that you probably aren't using because I know I didn't use it very effectively for a very long time. And that's the library feature in Photoshop CC. Any version of the Creative Cloud will have this library feature. And it's actually pretty helpful for your workflow when you start using it. Let's jump into Photoshop. I'll tell you all about it. So in your Adobe photography plan, you get Lightroom and Photoshop, right? And that's typically the only two features that people use in their Adobe CC subscription are Lightroom and Photoshop. There's a lot of really awesome things that are also included in there if you dig a little bit to find them. And one of them is libraries. Now, basically what a library is, is it's a place where you can store things that you do in Photoshop, routine things that you pull up and call up. You can store in Photoshop in a way. It's really not stored in Photoshop, it's fo stored in your Creative Cloud account. We'll talk about that as we go through. But for simplicity's sake, you're in Photoshop, you need this picture, you use it all the time like me with my color wheel. I can go into my library, pull it up, and there it is. Just like that, like magic. I don't have to go searching my computer. Now there are other ways that I use these libraries that I think you're gonna find very helpful in your workflow as well. Now before we get into it here, let's talk about the Creative Cloud um, subscription. Some people think that, oh, the Creative Cloud subscription is like the Adobe's just trying to watch everything I do in Photoshop. And that's not necessarily true. The only thing that really goes to the cloud are things that you say, hey, Adobe, I want you to put this in the cloud. And that's where the libraries come in. Okay, so it's not like because you're on this CC subscription that everything's happening in the interwebs. That's not how it works. All right, it's happening on your computer and whatever you tell to go to the internet goes to the internet. All right, so let's just get that out of the way. So these libraries, where are they? Well, if you don't have them uh, in your pane right here, your, your working pane here, you'll go to window. And then right here, you're going to see libraries. These are in alphabetical order. So you look for the L's and you'll find libraries. Okay. So once you hit libraries, I like to put these libraries right in here with my history and my properties, because I do use these rather routinely. So I want to have quick access to them. So this image that you see in front of you is the um, color wheel that I use, uh, the color wheel that I use in a lot of my education and a lot of my training, you'll see this color wheel come up all the time. So I need to have quick access to that. So one of the things that I can do is I can and store that in this library and I can call it up at any time as I'm working in Photoshop. So let's just take a look at this here. In the libraries, I like to have this set from instead of view by type, I have it set to view by group. Now, there's a couple ways you can add something to a library. I can drag this and just drop it right here and it's going to add this layer right to this library. And you'll notice that it's titled exactly whatever I have the title on the, uh, the layer here. So if this said layer one, this would then say layer one in here. Okay, so it's not grouped right now. It's just kind of floating around in my library. But the cool thing about this is that let's say I close it down and I want access to it again. I'm in my libraries. I double click it. And guess what? I've got access to it. it magically. It just opens up from the internet and it's not really magic. It's going into your Adobe creative cloud account and the 20 gigs of data that you're using are, are this is basically where this is stored is in that 20 gigs of data. But the really great thing about this is that if you have this set up by view by group, you can make a new library here. And this library, I'll call this images. Okay. So once I have this called images, I can either drag this and drop that into that library, or I can right click it and I can say add to group, and then I'll change it to images. Okay. So that's one way that I use these. So what you'll see here is, and we see video helpers, a lot of the YouTube things that I do, the, 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 um, the thumbnails that I do on YouTube. Well, I've got a, a cheat sheet for that. I just double click this and look, everything that is in this thing that says template for videos is changeable. So a lot of times when you see the thumbnails that I use on YouTube or on F64 Academy, I'm using stuff that's stored in my creative cloud. So I can just double click it. I'll have to remake it every single time. And that's the beauty of these things. They're, they're quick access call to action types of things. One other way that you can use that is if you were to, uh, let's say we're working on this image and I want to add my watermark to it. Well, if I double click right here, I can open up my watermark and then I can just drag this and drop this right onto this document. And look at that. I've got my watermark easily accessible and right there in my library. So I can put that wherever I want. So if you do have a watermark that you apply to images, this is a great place to put it is in your library so that you always know where it is. 
Okay. Another way that I use these libraries is let's look at this photo. So um, a lot of times we do a lot of work here in Photoshop, right? Um, everything that you see here are adjustment layers that are making this happen. These are all adjustment layers that I've created from the Zone System Express 6, okay? So with all these adjustment layers here, if I wanted to use these adjustment layers on another image, I know that if I have open up another image, I could always come in here and just drag all of these layers grab all of them and drop them onto this image. And because they're adjustment layers with no masks, essentially what I have here are the exact same settings that I did on the other image on this image. But let's say um, you don't have this image pulled up in Photoshop. One thing that you can do to set yourself up for success is you can create a group of even adjustment layers. So if I grab, I'm gonna make a, a group of all of these adjustment layers. They're already selected, but I'll grab the bottom one, press and hold shift and press command or control G. And then I'm gonna call this um, good ADJ settings, okay? And then maybe landscape here, or I'll put it in the front, or I'll just put LS for landscape, okay? So now I can drag this whole folder and bring it up into my library. Now I'm not bringing the image into my library. And the reason I don't bring the image into my library is I've only got 20 gigs of data. So if I bring a five gigabyte PSD file and I put it into this library, guess what? I've just used five gigs of my 20 gigs or 25% of my storage for these good settings. So instead I can just grab the group of adjustment layers and pull them into uh, my library. Now I do have to reiterate here that none of these adjustment layers had any masks on them. And that's a really important thing to understand. None of them have any masks on them because if they have masks on them, that's now pixel data that's recorded from the image before. Okay. So let's say I don't have this open anymore. Okay. This image is not open. I'm like, you know what? When I was in Yosemite, um, I had that really good landscape setting that I made and I put it in my library. I want to put those, all of those settings right there onto this photo. All I got to do is come over here into my library, double click this. It's not going to look like anything because adjustment layers, they only work if they have data underneath them to adjust. Okay. So now I can grab these adjustment layer settings and just drag them over to this image and look at that. They're magically there. Now, because they're adjustment layers, if I ever needed to adjust any of these further, I could do that. I've got all the layers that I need here. So if you know that there's like five or six uh, adjustment layers that you use all the time on your photos, put them into a group, just those adjustment layers, put them into your library, and then you can access them at any time. So you might be thinking, well, Blake, I could have just created a LUT for that. True. But when you create a LUT for those adjustment layers, what happens? You can't go in and edit the adjustment layers because the lookup table records all of those adjustments in there. So here I have basically a little, uh, you know, library full of great things that I do with my zone system express six built from libraries. And it's phenomenal because at any point I can open up those layers and drag them and drop them onto my photo. I'll show you this again, just so you can see it. So here are those adjustment layers that I dragged and dropped into my library so I could access them at another time. I'm going to double click them. And after I double click them, I can grab this group and drag it and drop it on top of that image. And all of those adjustment layers that I used on the image before are now used on this image. Okay. And like I said, if I need to adjust any of these, I can come into any one of these, uh, these adjustments that I have here, this, we can go to the properties of this curve and modify it. See that? So that I can make it more fine tuned for this image, as opposed to the image that I had used it on before. This opens up some really awesome speed editing for Photoshop. This can be a workflow mastery type thing because you're storing things that you do all the time in your libraries. So you might be wondering, okay, well, where is this library and what is it doing? Well, if you come down into your uh, creative cloud account, uh, what you'll see here under files. So here's our apps under files. We can say view on web and we press view on web. That's going to open up where our creative cloud documents are stored. So if I go to libraries, you can see here all the different libraries that we have created under my library, you can see the, breakdown of where I've put individual images. We got our color wheel here. Uh, we've got some of the thumbnails that I use here. So everything that is accessed on Photoshop in the library section here can also be seen on the website, which makes it really easy for managing stuff. Because if you want to delete stuff out of here, you got to do it one by one. If you go to the website, you can delete many things at any given time. The other great thing about this is that these libraries follow you.
So if you're working on a desktop and you're like, man, I really wish I had those adjustment layers from that photo that I shot in Yosemite. Well, guess what? Because I've put it into this group, it's automatically updated it in the cloud. So if I go over to my laptop, when I'm in Yosemite, I can drag and drop those layer adjustment layers right into that next photo. So the three ways that we can use these libraries as a landscape photographer, the color wheel, we can put our color wheel in there. So we always have access to our color wheel. Okay, that's way number one. Number two is with our watermark. If you use a watermark quite frequently, put that PNG file of your watermark into your library so you can double click it, drag it and drop it onto your image. Now the more advanced way and the third way, which is my favorite, is to save a group of adjustment layers, specifically adjustment layers, not pixel layers, because adjustment layers are very small. They weigh nothing. So they don't weigh down your Adobe Creative Cloud account with big files that have these adjustment layers on them. Just take the adjustment layers, put them in your library, and you can use them anytime you want on any photo going forward. Libraries can be a phenomenal way to speed up your workflow, and you've seen three ways that we've done that here on this video. If you like this, please comment on it, share it, tell a friend, and subscribe, and hit that little bell there so you get notified anytime I make a new video. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it and I hope you enjoy this and start using libraries. It's already in your Creative Cloud account. You may as well use them, right?